We've finished designing our custom jewelry, time to get 3D printing in FDM and DLP. Previously in this series we designed four rings using a range of techniques in Onshape and Mesh Mixer. Be sure to check them out because they're easy to follow and the software is totally free. Ultimately our goal is to use a castable resin to investment cast these and have them returned in silver. But why not see how good a result we can get using a traditional FTM printer as well as a resin DLP printer. In the previous instalments we designed these four rings. They were just examples only and I wasn't particularly happy with the way they were looking so I went through and made some minor changes. Let me run you through them. The first thing I did to the extruded ring was to even up the pattern on the inside so all of the lines were the same width. I also joined them up so they'd make a zigzag across the surface. The next thing I did was reduce the size of the arcs here so that way the hollow section would be able to go the whole way through. The revolved ring had a particularly deep channel as part of its starting profile so what I did was shallow that and smooth out the profile and then I shot in these little gems so they seemed a little bit more integrated into the design. This geometric ring looks like it's probably gone through the most changes but in fact it was quite minor. All I did was undo the shell and then apply fillets evenly to all of the corners before reapplying the shell. I then put a little fillet on the inside just to help with the strength. Finally for the lofted rings I cleaned up the two profiles and reapplied the loft. But now they're simple pentagons with about 15 degrees of twist in between. This model was once again put through Mesh Mixer to apply the pattern tool to create the Veroni style effect here. I've nicknamed this one the Coral Ring. Time to print our four rings on the Audi 3D printer, also known as the Cocoon Create Touch. For the FDM printing I used Simplify 3D and laid them out as you can see here. The revolved ring and the coral ring I decided to leave flat because I felt like that was the least amount of support that would be needed. The extruded ring seems like it's flat also but if we spin the camera around we can see that it's actually sitting on one of its flat sides and that angles the whole thing up overall. We can see that the geometric ring has some large flat sides so the ring is positioned to sit on one of these so we have a nice flat base to build up from. I was trying to avoid supporting the coral ring as much as possible because I knew it would never come out. Therefore I used the add manual support feature in Simplify 3D. I set the support pillar resolution down to 2 and then one at a time manually placed pillars where I thought would be the most problematic areas. We can see from the print preview here that Simplify 3D was playing up a little bit. It kept our manual support placement but we can also see on the coral ring that it also added some bits where we really didn't want them. I couldn't get that to disappear so I just had to leave it on and hope for the best. So how did they turn out? Well, better than I expected. The coral ring did suffer from the unwanted support material added by Simplify 3D. The pattern is simply too delicate and too fine to pull all of it out without damaging it. Apart from that, the result is surprisingly good, considering that a typical strand of the coral ring is only 0.8mm wide and our nozzle is only 0.4mm wide, it's amazing that our printer has done such a good job without having stringing everywhere. Next we have the revolved ring, which turned out quite well. Since it has minimal overhangs, it printed without any support material and a minimum of fuss. The small diamond details on top can be seen well and even the TT is visible on the inside. The extruded ring was just a little bit too dainty for this type of technique. The shape has actually been reproduced pretty well but I feel that if I tried to put it in my finger there's a good chance the ring could explode. If the design was changed to beef up the cross section thickness, I think this ring could be a really successful design. Finally we have the geometric ring, which turned out pretty great as well. There are some artifacts left over where the support material had to be pulled off, but apart from that, it's a pretty clean print. So we're off to a flying start with FDM printing, much better than expected. I wonder what we can do with DLP printing now on our one hell duplicator 7. Time to slice the DLP. I did my usual practice of tilting them very slightly to let the fluid drain and to avoid large contact areas near the bed. I then applied what I thought would be the minimum amount of support lattice to hold the rings up and prevent any issues. To be honest, I was probably trying to cut corners here because the ring should have been angled over a lot more on this side than you see here. These turned out pretty good as well, but it did take me a few goes to get them right. I must confess, I have nowhere near as much experience with DLP printing compared to FDM. Trying to cut corners cost me and I ended up doing some of the rings three times until I was happy. Let's have a look at them one by one. The coral ring turned out probably best of the lot. The details were created beautifully using clear Monocure 3D resin. The trickiest bit was cutting off all of the support material where some of the ring was damaged, but even so, the result is pretty spectacular. The sub-optimal angle I placed the revolved ring on definitely made it suffer. 
Although most of the details are there, the overall shape is a little bit warped and it really should have been printed end to end. The faux diamonds look pretty good on the outside and the TT is definitely clear on the inside as well. The extruded ring looked great until I had to clip off all of the support material. It was extremely hard to do this without damaging the ring and both versions that I printed ended up snapping in the weakest part. The internal pattern looks outstanding because in the clear resin you can see it from the outside of the ring. The geometric ring was the hardest one to print. It's important when arranging your objects in the slicer to try and make sure there's not a big disparity between the thinnest layers and the thickest layers. Because I firstly printed this ring on a very shallow angle, this was the case and the early efforts were very very warped. I ended up printing this one by itself standing up on its side which needed much less support material and had a far superior result. There are some marks where the support material was clipped off but overall it's a pretty clean print. So which method is the victor? Because I already had some pretty good profiles, FDM was pretty easy to set up and get reasonable results. Considering my inexperience with DLP printing however, I think a little bit of time invested in learning how to best position and slice the objects will see far greater results. One thing to note is that because all of these rings have such delicate features, either printing method produces very brittle parts. It's not until we get them back from being cast in silver that the parts will have any type of strength or longevity. I'll continue to hone my skills and in the next video we'll crack open the blue cast resin and see if we can't make castable rings ready to come back in silver. See you then. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.